ready? All right. And there in the stable amongst the chickens and the donkeys and the cows, in the quiet of the night, God gave the word, world his wonderful gift. The baby that would change the world was born, his baby son. Mary and Joseph wrapped him up to keep him warm. They made a soft bed of straw and used the animal's feeding trough as his cradle. And they gazed in wonder as God's great gift, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Mary and Joseph named him Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God has come to live with us. Because, of course, he had. Isaiah 9, 6. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, for silent flocks by night, Behold, throughout the heavens, there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low upon the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. That Jesus Christ is born Down in the lowly manger Our humble Christ was born And God sent us salvation That blessed Christmas morn Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, for the King of Angels. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet thee. Born this happy morning, Jesus, to thee be all glory given. Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing, O oh, come, let us adore him, O oh, come, let us adore him, O oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Ten. 
tell me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Tell how the angels in chorus sang as they welcomed his birth. Glory to God in the highest, peace and good tidings on earth. Tell me the story of Jesus, write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Tell of the cross where they nailed him, writhing in anguish and pain. Tell of the grave where they laid him, tell how he lives again. Love in that story so tender, clearer than ever I see. Stay, let me weep while you whisper, love paid the ransom for me. Tell me the story of Jesus, Write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. You know, one of the special things about this time of year is that many throughout the world take the time to not only acknowledge, but focus on the birth of Christ and the significance of it and the fact that God sent us this special gift into the world. And they really do it in a lot of different ways. Yeah, just last night, I took the kids and uh, my nephews and my niece just out around in our neighborhood to look at the Christmas lights. And quite a few times, just driving around, we saw nativity scenes. We saw Jesus in the manger with Mary and Joseph. We saw the shepherds and the animals and even the wise men. Yeah, and the wise men actually play an interesting role in the birth narrative. Because although we're aware they weren't there that night, they weren't there with the shepherds, uh, they did take their own time, their own energy, their own effort, their own expense to come and see what was going on. They recognized that something significant was taking place. And so they wanted to come. They had the desire to come and honor and even worship this king of the Jews. But, you know, they, they really just came as observers to this event, just to, to witness it, to, in a sense, to even be a part of it. Yeah, but we know we can do more than just observe like they did. We know the birth of Jesus meant something so much more than that. His birth was actually the beginning of all of our salvation story. Yeah, it, it was the start. And the fullness of that story happened some 30-odd years later, which is what we're here to celebrate and acknowledge this morning. You know, the wise men brought these special gifts to offer Jesus, these expensive gifts to offer Jesus. And they, they gave something that cost them. They had to make a, a sacrifice for what they gave to honor this king. But, you know, it's really nothing in comparison to the greater sacrifice's significance and what happened on the cross. Because it wasn't just a small gift on this one time, this, this small gesture. It was a gift that cost so much more. It was a gift that was without price with, without, without measure. It was a gift that God gave for us and was the, the true gift that God offered for us. It wasn't just the gift of sending his son in the world. It was the gift of offering his life 
so that we can be with him. And again, that's the true significance of the time of this season. That's the true gift that we have been given. And we're here to honor this morning as we take of the, the bread, as we take of the cup to remind us of what was given for us, to remind us of the price that was paid for us to fully grasp, for us to fully take hold of, and for us to fully accept and be able to enter into that salvation. And so as we take this time now to, to take of this bread and cup, just pray with me, and, uh, and then you are free to, uh, to take it and reflect on the power and the fullness of what God has done for us. Our God and Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. God, when we really try to fully understand and wrap our minds around what it is that you've done for us, any gift we could offer is, is truly unworthy and pales in comparison to what you gave for us. But God, you did it because of your love for us. You did it because you want us to be with you. You did it because it was the only way. God, we are so grateful and thankful. So as we take this bread, which reminds us of the physical gift that you gave us, but even all that Jesus endured because of his love for us and his desire to do your will, as we take this cup, which reminds us of that, that precious, that sinless, that perfect blood and how it covers us, it purifies us, it makes us whole and clean again so that we can be with you. God, I pray that as we take this, we embrace the fullness of you and your love in Christ's death. We thank you. We love you. We praise you. Did Mary say, I praise the Lord, I praise the Lord with all my heart. I was very happy because God is my servant. I'm not a poor king, but he has shown me he cared for me, his lowly service. From now till the end of time, people I remember how much God blessed me. Yes, the powerful one had done a great thing for me. His name is very holy. He always gave me mercy to those who worship him. He rescued me. He reached he reached he reached out his arm. I saw his power, power, his God of those you proud, who think great about them, about themselves. He raised up the humble people, he filled the hunger with great things, but he said, to reach away for nothing. God has helped Israel, the people he chose to save, serve him. He did not forget his promise to give us his mercy. He has done what he promised to our ancestors. Abraham I his surely forever we Mary stay with Elizabeth about three and a half three months and a half bit home. No. Jesus name above all
in Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith. This gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. Well, I said Christmas 2020 was going to be different, right? Well, in honor of the recent passing of the great Alex Trebek, we're going to start off this week playing a very Riverwood musical Jeopardy. Here's how it's going to work. You're going to be able to keep score at home and, and see how you do. And we're going to have a lot of musical clues, so get some pen and paper ready to record your score. Now, as you're getting that together, let me go over some of the categories. We've got music movie themes. We've got TV theme songs. We've got school fight songs. We've got songs of an era, songs for an event, and finally, a place for music. Now, if we were meeting together at the building and I was setting this up, I try to have it so different ones of you out there could call out categories and we could then get the answers from you. But hey, we're still in my living room. And hey, I've even got on my pajamas this morning. So I guess I'm the one who's going to be able to pick. Now, let me remind you that music has a powerful way of shaping our perceptions and memories. There are certain songs that when they're played, they instantly transport us back to a particular moment. In our game this morning, I'm going to play just a few bars of some music while I give you the clue. So, let's get started. And again, since I get to choose, we're going to start with songs for or from an event. We'll start with the $200 clue. Here's your, here's your answer. There was lots of pomp and circumstance where you likely first heard this tune. Okay, so what is it? It's graduation. Okay, now let's try the $400 clue. Everyone stood when she marched into this all right, here comes the answer. What is the bride? All right, I think we're going to shift around a little bit 
Let's go to a different category. This one, a place for music. All right? So hearing the steel drums playing Mary Ann, you imagine this location. All right, you got it? Here's the answer. What is the Caribbean or Jamaica or the islands? Any one of those would do. Okay, let's say we're going to stay in that same category. And so now here's your next clue. Your cruise ship has docked where if you hear this melody? Mexico. Mexico. Okay, I hope you're doing well. We're now going to shift over to the left side of the board, and we're going to do movie themes. And we'll start with an easy one for 200. Hearing these ominous chords, a whole generation became afraid to do something. You ready? Okay, you got it? You got it? What is get back into the water? All right, let's move on for the $400 clue. This franchise started as a TV series. The star's recent rants on the set have made headlines. What is Mission Impossible? Now, we're going to jump to the bottom of this category. This is a $1,000 clue, and I frankly think that without the music, few of us would get this one. But here you go. Over his 50-year history, this leading man has grossed over $7 billion dollars. Okay, here's your answer. Who is Bond? James Bond. I hope you're having fun with this. Just a few categories left. Mm, what will it be next? How about songs of an era? Yeah. Music defines eras in time. And so let's start eh, with a little bit more complicated one down on the $600 level. You probably see these colors when you hear this music playing. It's tough. <laughs> All right, the answer that I'm looking for Black and white. Because big band music was from the era of the 30s and the 40s. And we think about some of those old classic uh, movies that were shot in black and white. Now, let's move to the 800. And this is a double for you. These two B bands define the music of the early 60s. Now, there you go. If I play the Beatles and the Beach Boys, in our minds, we're back in the 60s. And frankly, if we were going to do this for a long time this morning, we could run through the next 50 years or so simply by the movie, the music. Well, moving on. While many of you weren't born when some of these launched, you still likely know these TV theme songs. So let's start with an easy one. And this one is for Margaret. For $200, what talented Hollywood director had his start 
as a child star on the series with this thing. Yeah, I knew you would all get that one. Who is Ron Howard? Okay, TV themes for 400. The occupants of this ship only expected to be on a three-hour cruise. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip that started from this hey, you got it? Boy, boy it's a minute. All right, final one we'll do in this category for today, TV themes for 600. This iconic 70s show featured the joining of two households. Here's the story of a lovely lady. Yeah, that, that was an easy one. Very lovely girl. What is the Brady Bunch? Now, tragically, we're not going to be able to go through all of the answers for school fight songs. I'll just let you know, though, the answer to all the questions, it's the same. I hope that was fun for you. It really does show how powerful music is. Even with bad question writing, it's really hard to miss a clue if you had the music. And Christmas truly fits this. When, when the kids were growing up, Rachel and I had a pretty established ritual. If we were able, on the day after Thanksgiving, we would get the decorations and the lights together and we would put up our Christmas tree. As part of that ceremony, we would play our Christmas music for the first time. In a dramatic way, hearing those songs kind of announced that the season had really arrived. The forms changed from albums to tapes to CDs. Now it's done virtually by Alexa throughout the house, but it still proclaims that Christmas is here. I will confess, however, Really, a love-hate relationship with Christmas music. Some of it is just, well, bad. I, I ask you in your homework for this week to listen more closely to the lyrics. And I can't see you raising your hands, okay? But I'll bet many of you discovered something that you had not heard before, okay? Maybe it is that protest scene on the front porch in We Wish You a Merry Christmas, where the carolers demand Vicky Pudding, or they're just not going to leave. Or maybe it's the kid who surely is going to have an identity crisis because he's seen his mother kissing Santa Claus. Or that supposedly positive song about how your grandmother got killed in a nasty hit-and-run accident. Now, you may point to some other ones that are worse. I think Santa Baby kind of comes to mind. And in a message potentially seen by preteens, we're just going to let that one go, okay? But most of those are in what I would call secular songs of Christmas. When it comes to the more religious songs of the season, uh, there aren't really any scary ones. And that's part of the conflict. Because a great many Christian Christmas songs, whether religious or, for that matter, secular, they're tranquil, they're serene, they're peaceful. It's chestnuts roasting on a fire, the little town of Bethlehem. But the Bible story of the birth of Jesus has ominous overtones. Let's start there. Luke's Gospel records the story of our Lord's birth, providing a unique perspective. It expands the story to include events surrounding the birth of John the Baptizer. Next, in the angel's words to Mary about the virgin birth, there is reference back to Elizabeth's pregnancy. 
The angel completes the message to Mary in verse 38. And she quickly leaves Nazareth and goes to the home of Elizabeth. There, by the Holy Spirit, she gives a blessing to Mary, who responds with a song. This is the first of three songs in these early chapters of Luke. Now, after John is born, his father Zechariah is filled with the Holy Spirit and manifests it by singing a song. And then finally, of course, in the next chapter, there is the song sung by the angels. These are, if you will, the first real Christmas songs. But they're vastly different than the serene carols that most of us are accustomed to at this time of year. While Mary mentions the birth of Jesus as a fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham, she also speaks of God's scattering of the proud in verse 51, bringing down rulers from their throne in verse 52, and sending the rich away empty in verse 53. While not a formal song when Jesus is presented in the temple at eight days old, Simeon is moved again by the Holy Spirit to go to the temple courts. And there he finds the child and takes him in his arms. First, he praises God, Luke chapter 2, verses 28 through 32. But then he provides this warning to Mary. This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will, print, will pierce your own soul too. This is the balance, if you will, in the Christmas message. A counterweight to the holly jolly choruses that too often fill the season. I suspect, I suspect that a great many people, especially those who've lost loved ones in 2020, respond to such messages wondering why the ho, ho, ho has passed them by. To speak where the Bible speaks is to give the full range of human emotion. Yes, there is joy in the Christmas message, but it also includes elements of loneliness and guilt and anger, and fear, and depression. In a time when we seem to learn of new tragedies every day, this likeness of Christmas seems absurd, unbearable even, doesn't it? I mean, it reminds it, or it ought to remind us, that even in the best of times, we live in, again, a groaning universe with hunger and homelessness and unemployment and lost business. It's proper, you see, to keep the full range of emotions before us. And there are Christmas songs that, well, try to provide this balance. Many, as an example, would list Joy to the World as a favorite Christmas carol. And I'm guessing that many, however, would be disappointed to know that Isaac Watts published the hymn in 1719 not as a song primarily about the birth of Jesus, but built from Psalm 98 about the second coming of Christ. We especially see this as we move beyond the opening verse to the third. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow far as the curse is found. Now there's a message that resonates Sins and sorrows grow. Yeah, that sounds like 2020. And let's not miss the rich themes found in the seemingly sublime songs. I mean, there's that God rest you merry gentlemen with the repeated statement about tidings of comfort and joy. But don't miss where they come from. God sent Christ, the song says, to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. I don't know about you, but there's a bunch of astray around me. And it's comforting to know that, that in a very way, God has and is dealing with all of this. Now, a second related thought. 
I shift our focus now from Luke to Matthew. In a previous lesson, I shared how Joseph received instructions from an angel to take the baby Jesus to Egypt. And I even expressed the likelihood that the gifts of the Magi provided for them while they were in that distant land. But I intentionally didn't complete the story. You see, Jesus escapes. But in Bethlehem, according to Matthew 2, verses 13 through 23, the Christmas story continues to play out in a massacre. Here's a verse you don't hear in a little town of Bethlehem. No mention of streets running red with blood while mothers wail and lament their lost children. No, that's a very different song, isn't it? As I express public appreciation for the many individuals who have sent Rachel and I Christmas cards this year, I note that most are sentimental and sweet. Like the many Hallmark movies, they're tales of snow with this covered wonderland where Christmas evokes the best in everyone. But Matthew's Christmas pageant ends not with a tinsel-covered tree or angels proclaiming goodwill, but with Rachel weeping for her slaughtered children. Look, Herod, for all the criticism that he receives, was no fool. He had been in power long enough to be able to tell a rival when he heard one. What the shepherds might see is a baby, just a distant relative of David, Herod knew as a threat to everything upon which his kingdom was based. Thus he joins other dictators like Putin and Kim Jong-un who do not mind a little murder in order to advance their view of their great political ideals. No, we don't like this part of the Christmas story. Christmas, for too many, has become an escapist fantasy that for one day of the year, everybody becomes miraculously transformed as Scrooge suddenly does what's right by Tiny Tim. It's the hope of that story from the trench warfare in World War I that stopped in 1914 to celebrate the season. The Bible, it tells us the truth about Bethlehem. If we'll turn down the Christmas music blaring in the shopping mall for just a moment, we might hear the mothers screaming, weeping for their lost babies, not only in Bethlehem, but even on the streets of Nashville. On Wednesday, Nashville murder victim number 97 was a young man by the name of Lee Turner. He was shot by a 16-year-old outside a bus station. The assailant said that he shot Turner because he disrespected his gang. Turner leaves a pregnant wife and a mother who will face Christmas without a son. In truth, I guess we can also include the mother of that 16-year-old because he won't be home for Christmas for a very, very long time. Somehow, I can't imagine either family will be singing Andy Williams, it's the most wonderful time of the year. No, I fear that in these mundane and serene carols, we have discounted the real Christmas story. You see, the true power and the glory of this event is only seen when it's set against the darkness and sin of this fallen world. Sometimes at this season of the year, we'll read the opening of John's glorious gospel. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. Christians call this the Incarnation. The belief that the God Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, came here, took on our flesh, forgave us, redeemed and saved us so that we might be brought up to God. In a sense, this is Matthew's version of that same story. John calls it the Word made flesh. Matthew calls it Bethlehem. 
both are radically different views of our world than what's popularly presented. Back in 2006, the self-help novel The Secret was released. It sold over 35 million copies. It popularized the notion that in some way our thoughts control the universe. It follows other books like the four-volume series called The Celestine Prophecy. And that was just part of an avalanche of New Age affirmation that says we're good, we're making progress, and at the very least we mean well. Those books encourage us to unleash the God within us. How do you believe such ridiculousness? When we just finished a century which produced two world wars which killed over 50 million people and featured Hiroshima and the Holocaust. I mean, in the 2000s, we've had 9-11 and terrorism and, and just in the most recent Years for which we have figures, 2018, 14,000 homicides here in the United States. To such a world, the Bible calls us back to Bethlehem at the end of the story of the Nativity. After the angels and the shepherds and the wise men and baby Jesus, yes, we hear the screams of the mothers weeping for Jewish babies. And before leaving the little town of Bethlehem, our noses get rubbed in politics and pain and blood and sorrow. Yes, it is a different Christmas story. Not likely the one that we sing about or even want, but it may very well be the story that we need. For any God you see who is unwilling to come to Bethlehem, won't do us much good. If any God is going to save us, God will have to come where we are because we can't get to Him. As I said earlier, there aren't many carols about this part of the Christian message. It isn't found on too many cards. But at Bethlehem, we see a prelude to events that later come at a place called Calvary. The one king of the Jews goes head to head with our kings and kingdoms and there's pain and violence and weeping and blood. And it all shows up the first time in Bethlehem. I, I, I confess, while we were still meeting together in person, that my wife had started watching The Bachelorette again. And I was coming through the other day having completed my virtual meeting with, uh, with a scene of a young man now sent home, lamenting not being chosen to stay on the show another week. He seemed to be convinced that he was deeply in love with this young woman, and it was meant to be the right relationship, whatever that means. Anyway, he not received a rose and was crushed and confused. If it's love, he said in his misery, why does it have to hurt so much? Why does love have to be so painful? Love ought not be that way. Well, if they allow me to ride in the limo away from the mansion where this contrivance of a supposed reality plays out, they won't. I put my hand on his shoulder and told him that love, Real love is always that way. It's painful. If there is to be love, there is risk. And if there is risk, there's always the possibility of pain. And that's the part of the Christian message that we see at Christmas at Bethlehem. And it and it seems to me, it strikes me as a message that much better resonates with the world suffering with COVID-19 and all the other problems and difficulties that are around us. 
God moved. God acted in Jesus Christ because he loved. Because he loved, there was pain. I hope as you think about this Christmas season 2020, that you'll recognize the opportunity to be honest. Honest with the text. Honest with the Christmas story. I hope that this week moving toward Christmas, despite the disease and all the other difficulties that are part of this pandemic, that you have a joyous and real holiday. Merry Christmas, everyone. Tears are falling, hearts are breaking, how we need to hear from God. You've been promised, we've been waiting, welcome holy child, welcome holy child. Hope that you don't mind our manger, how I wish we would have known. Long awaited, holy stranger, make yourself at home. Make yourself at home. Bring your peace into our violence. Bid our hungry souls be filled. We're now breaking heaven's silence. Welcome to our world. Welcome to our world. Fragile fingers sent to heal us. Tender brow prepared for thorn. Tiny heart whose blood will save us, unto us is born, unto us is born. Wrap our injured flesh around you, breathe our air and walk our side. Rob our sin and make us holy, perfect Son of God. Welcome to our world. Let's pray. Dear Lord, um, we thank you for all of the many blessings that you have uh, given us. Um, we thank you so much for so much that you've done for us. Um, but we'd also like to pray for um, the Shirley Clark family. Um, and we just pray that you comfort them. And uh, we'd also like to pray for uh, Brenda and Randy. Um, because of uh, Bill's uh, passing from COVID. Um, we just pray for all of those that are affected by COVID uh, to receive healing and, um, and help and comfort, dear, dear Lord. Um, we thank you for, for uh, our church family and that even uh, during this uh, uncertain time, we can still um, meet online. Um, we thank you for everything that you've uh, done for us and uh, everything that you've uh, blessed us with once again, dear Lord. And um, we just pray uh, and thank you for um, your uh, son's sacrifice on the cross. And in Jesus' name, amen. Good morning again, Riverwood. Thank you for joining us this morning. What an awesome morning it is to, to worship together. So we thank you for, for joining us uh, in this time. Uh, we just have a few quick announcements just to, to remind her uh, for our youth group uh, that you have a Christmas party, uh, Devo, this afternoon in the Fellowship Hall between uh, 4 p.m. and 7.30. Uh, so make plans for that. And then also the church office will be closed um, December 24th through January 4th. Uh, so remember that. 
Uh, for our prayer list, we want to continue to lift up the Clark pa family and the passing of uh, Shirley Clark. Uh, graveside service will be held Monday, December 21st. That is at 2 p.m. at Spring Hill Cemetery, and everyone is welcome. Uh, so uh, that is uh, Monday at 2 o'clock in Spring Hill. So just uh, if you have the opportunity to be able to come out uh, for that, uh, that would be wonderful. Continue to lift up the Clark family, though, in your prayers and all those listed in our prayer list. As we have several families uh, dealing with COVID or, or some other illnesses, so please continue to just um, lift them up and look over our prayer list and continue to reach out and encourage each other. Uh, may you have a wonderful week. I hope that your Christmas is safe and that it is blessed. And I hope this week that, that each of us are able to, to grow closer to God, be able to experience Him and His love uh, this week. And I look forward to worshiping with you again uh, next Sunday. And continue, continue to, to reach out to each other and stay connected. And more importantly than that, help us to remember to stay committed uh, to God and to loving Him and to serving Him and is sharing in his love and his message with others. Have a wonderful day.